So today's video is going to be about how to install AMP by QCoders onto TrueNAS. Um, there are a couple other videos out there and tutorials about this. However, um, none of them do it in the way I'm about to do. So um, first off, you're obviously going to need your license to actually use it. You're able to install it without a license, but you won't be able to add any instances or servers without having a license. So to get started with, I'll talk about why my method is different than this method. So normally most of the other ones either use containers or virtual machines to run their um, instances of AMP, which work fine most of the time. However, I found them to be kind of buggy. And not only that, they use a lot more resources than the app necessarily needs because it also has to run whatever OS and however whatever other um, variables there are on your virtual machine. So the way I did it is I actually installed it through the Applications tab right here. So this is my personal one that I actually use regularly. And as you can see, it's running just fine. The nice thing about running through the application area is you only use the resources the app actually needs. Also, um, TrueNAS is a lot better about keeping these apps started and running all the time, even if they were to crash or anything. Um, so that's great. Uh, I actually used to use Crafty for my for my servers. However, the last update broke it entirely, and you're not able to roll it back. So that kind of sucks, but um, it's whatever. I'm using AMP now, and I love AMP way better. Crafty is still a great option if you're looking for an easier install, and just for Minecraft servers. AMP offers a lot more customization and functionality. Okay, so to get started, we're going to go ahead and go to straight to Discover Apps, and then we're going to click Custom App. For this section, you can put it as AMP or whatever you want. I already have another one named AMP, so I'll just put it as AMP1, just for this example. I'll have copy and paste links for every, or copy and paste for everything that I'm about to do. Some of it gets a little confusing. So first thing is our image. This is my favorite repository for a Dockerized version of AMP. It is not officially supported by Cube Coders or AMP, so you won't be able to get any help with it if it breaks. Also, before you use it, I'd recommend just go and check the GitHub for it quick. If this loads, um, we'll come back. There we go. Um, and just make sure everything looks good. So there are a couple of concerns with anything that's been modified. Is there could be um, viruses or any other stuff, um, malware. But as far as I can tell, it's completely safe at the moment. So that is good. Once you check that out, everything default is fine. So it should be latest and then pull the image of the, it's not already present. Um, all of this stuff you're able to skip, time zone and everything, make sure it's set to your right time zone. And then we're gonna have to add a couple of environment variables. So the first variable we're gonna add is our license. So this is where you'd paste in your license. It's still going to ask you during your setup just to paste in your license, but I'd recommend also putting it here. It doesn't work all the time if you don't have it as a variable. So I'll just put um, just a fake one in here. Um, as long as you have something underneath there, it's fine. And I think it more so just needs the variable to be there, and it'll edit the value as needed. The next one is going to be your AMP module, which in this case is just going to be ADS. And then these two are a little more personalized. So you have your username. Um, in my case, I'm just going to put admin. Um, I'd recommend putting a username you know you're going to remember, uh, whatever that may be. And then next we have the password. Um, in my case, again, I'm going to put something very, very simple. I'm not actually going to use this. But if you are planning on using this installation, you should have a somewhat secure password, as anybody on your network can get access to your AMP page if you have a really weak password. Next is for the restart policy. I put it as always. Some apps are fine if you leave it as a no, um, but this is nice in case TrueNAS um, reboots, it'll automatically restart itself, or if something bad happens or it doesn't boot up right, it'll try to attempt the restart, um, which is what I actually want. So uh, I put it as this. You should also. Um, I highly recommend that. The next thing we're going to have to add is our network configuration. So. Um, AMP is expecting the port 8080. 
Uh, so for your container port, no matter what, you're going to want to put this. It won't work if you don't put this. You won't be able to access it inside your browser unless you put this. As for the host port, you are able to try 8080. However, this port is sometimes used by other apps. So if you're having issues where it's not working or you know for a fact that another app or um, virtual machine container, whatever it may be, is using the external port 8080, um, you need to put something different. So in my case, 8080 was used. So for my case, I'll just put a random port. Um, that's fine for me. I'll copy it, though, so I have it. And then finally, we have our storage configuration. This is another kind of weird one. You're going to want it to be underneath host path. And for your host path, you're going to want to oh, come on. Go to wherever your, um, the drive you want it to be under. So in my case, I have my Minecraft drive I want to put underneath there. And you're going to want to have a data set specifically for this. So I'll put AMP1 as an example. So I'll put that as my, my host path data set. However, there is something you have to do that's a little bit strange. If I can find it quick, there we go. For your mount path, you need to put this. Um, this dockerized version of AMP is not looking for your um, for this path. So it wants to store its data underneath this this path, but this path does not necessarily exist on TrueNAS. So it won't actually do anything. And if it sees this path, it will actually install it and update fine, but nothing will save. And every time you reload the app, it'll reinstall AMP altogether, which is not what you want. So um, I just put this inside of here, and this basically fools it into thinking, hey, this is the right path. That's the folder I actually need to go to. And then I like to enable resource limits. You don't necessarily have to. For my case, I'm actually not going to change them. Uh, I run about, I run a, oh, sorry. I run two servers. One of them is fairly modified, and uh, another one's pretty much vanilla. So um, I just normally keep it underneath. I've normally put 10 CPUs and 16 gigabytes. But this is more so your discretion. Whatever you determine you might need, that'll be perfect. Then you're going to go ahead and click Install, and everything should work fine. If you have any errors or anything, I'd highly recommend just throwing it in ChatGPT, or if you understand it enough, you could probably read through it and figure it out. So the next step I like to do is just check the logs quick. Um, it's going to start installing everything. So right here we see it's getting all of the files from the CubeCoder website and it is currently installing AMP. So just wait here a little bit. It might take a little bit. Sometimes it will give you an error. Uh, first step I normally do for that, uh, I don't remember exactly what the error says, but it says something. It Right after this, instead of saying complete, it'll just have an error saying like failed to install. Uh, normally restarting the app will work fine for that, but not all the time. So maybe use ChatGPT if you keep having problems, but uh, it typically will work just fine as long as you're app was successfully created and was able to pull all of the files, it should be perfectly fine. So what you're actually waiting for to see into the logs is you want to see AMP started, AMP is now running. So to access your panel, you're going to be using your um, uh, your local IP address for your NAS, plus you're going to be using your port that you chose. It might be 8080 if you kept the default, but if you put something special, you're going to need to use that one. So in my case, that is it. It's going to remain here. Your username is going to be whatever you put in your username field when you set up the app. Your password is going to be whatever your password was. In my case, it's 1234. I'm going to click Login. And now, this is the setup. So click Next here. You're going to want to put your AMP license in here if you have it. You don't actually need, need it to set it up, but if you would, if you're just installing it to make sure like you like how it looks and everything, you don't need to put one in immediately, but to actually add any apps, you're going to need to have that. So in my case, I want standalone. If you need one of these, you're going to know if you need one of these. So I'm not going to go into detail on what these all mean or anything, but for most cases, you're going to want the default. Um, this is for crash reports and everything. So yeah, I just leave it all on. I don't really care if they take some data. I don't have anything crazy on here, but it, you might want to turn this off depending on what you're running on here. It's going to go ahead and re apply everything. Click Restart AMP. It's going to restart it. It's going to take a minute or two. Go ahead and do my admin and my 1234. And it brings us here to our homepage.
Alrighty. So I actually jumped over to my personal one because I don't want I only have enough licenses for one um, server or one uh, instance of it. So uh, this is my license right here. I have my personal server here. And the first thing I'm going to do just to kind of show you how everything works and actually one very, very important step is I'm going to create a server quick. This part of it is going to be different depending on what you're using. But um, I'll explain what's going to be about the same for every single one of them. So for example, I'll just do a Minecraft Java edition uh, server. And I'll go ahead and just put test on here. And then you can look through these and choose what you actually want. I normally just leave it on default. Start instance on boot basically just if you read or restart the app, like if you're to restart AMP or you're to restart your TrueNAS, it'll automatically start up the server whenever you... Um, whenever it boots back on. So I'll create the instance here. And the one thing that's going to be the same for every single one of them is you're going to see it here and you go ahead and click this button right here, manage instance, and it'll bring you to this page. This page shows you a lot of stuff. The main thing we're after is this primary endpoint. So just to make sure it's, I'll show you what happens. This is for any game, not just this, not just Minecraft, but I'll put my primary endpoint into my server address, this is right, and I'll just name it test quick. So we'll see that it won't actually be able to connect to it because TrueNAS is not pushing the port. Actually, it wasn't booted up, but either way, it's not going to be able to connect to it. See, once it booted up, it says get sock opt, which is basically means it's not able to access it. What you need to do is you need to find the port that the server is running on. So in my case, it's 25566. Go back to your TrueNAS, and we're going to go ahead and edit the app. We're going to go down to the network configuration right here, and we are going to go ahead and click Add twice. We're going to see here, we're going to have this. Paste whatever that port was into here. The first one should be your port. Host port should be whatever the port was for the app. Container port should be whatever the port was for the app. And then your protocol should be TCP. You're going to do it again, this time making it UDP. Go ahead, go down to the bottom, and update the app. It's going to take a minute to update your app. And once this goes, we're going to go back here, and we're going to see it's reconnecting because the it's restarting the app now. Give it a minute. And now that we're back in here, I'm gonna, you're back on this page. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my test and make sure that the port's the same, looking good. And once the server's up, takes a second sometimes. There we go. We should be able to now see that the server is able to be accessed on your local network. Um, you're going to have to port forward it if you're going to want to... Um, have people play it in other networks. So if someone's not connected to your Wi-Fi and you want them to play it, then you're going to need to do that. But as you can see, it's running great. It's loading fairly quickly. It's a little bit slow because they just loaded it up, but it gets pretty fast and it runs basically seamlessly once it's going good. And as we can see, it's running perfectly. We're able to connect to it. Um, I'll have another video on how to get your Minecraft server public to let other people play in two different methods. And I'll also have a more in-depth for how to use AMP and specifically Minecraft servers on here. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in that. But other than that, now you're running AMP and um, you should have no problems with it. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.